Hello friends, welcome hip cats and groovy chicks. Welcome back to the Jazz Ranch. You know, it's Christmas time and the horses are out there singing Christmas carols to each other. And we love that. But anyway, I have something special for you this evening and it's all about how to invert chords. In other words, chord inversions and how to create beauty in your songs by using them. And a great example would be this song called If I Loved You by Richard Rogers, you know, from the musical Carousel. Now, Richard Rogers, and I have a quote for you from Richard Rogers, he said this, It may be that we can sing what we often cannot say, whether it be from shyness, fear, lack of the right words, or the passion or dramatic gift to express them. More souls have rallied to more causes by the strains of music than by straining rhetoric. That's Richard Rogers. I like that one. Now here we go with his famous song called If I Loved You and I'll talk about the use of chord inversions after that. Here we go. Starting out, one of the most important things you're going to learn about chord theory is how to invert the chords. In other words, how to play a chord in root position and then invert it into first inversion and second inversion. That just means you're playing the chord with a different note being on the bottom. In other words, in the, in, here we have in chapter 5 of my book, Chord Inversions and Alterations. So the root position will always have the root, or C chord will have the C on the bottom. The first inversion will have the third on the bottom, so we just in, we take the bottom note and put it on the top of the chord. Now it becomes the first inversion with the third on the bottom. And then we take that bottom note and put it on the top. Now we have the second inversion of a triad with the fifth. So you have to remember that the root position always has the root in the bass, and the first inversion always has the third in the bass, and the second inversion always has the fifth in the bass so no matter what you're playing in the right hand if you play that root you can play the C chord in any position you want as long as that root is in the bass you're going to be, be playing a root position chord and then if you play you know the third in the bass and play the chord in any position you're always going to have a first inversion if you play the G in the bass and you can play the C chord in any inversion in your right hand, it's going to be a, first inver a second inversion. So now, important thing is to learn how that will sound if you play different inversions to a chord progression. So if I play this chord progression now with all the root chords, it will sound like this. If I 
play it now using the inversions, you're going to see I have a very smooth descending bass line. So the inversions allow us to control the bass line or make the bass line more interesting than just playing through a cycle. This is going to be a descending bass line now. Here we have this. So the same, same melody now with the descending bass line. Again, the inversions. So, you, so now you begin to hear that bass line right, moving because of the inversions. You see, the inversions allow us to have that m movement in the, in the bass line. So if this is new to you, the question you'd be asking would be, how do you show in popular music or jazz that you want an inversion to be played as opposed to a root position chord. Well, that's what are called slash chords. In other words, this is C as a chord symbol. This is C slash E. And this is C slash G. You know, same thing if I do this. That's C. This is C slash E, and this is C slash G. So the slash chords show you one inversion to play. Now that just means that to the left of the slash is the actual chord and to the right of the slash is the bass note. I just want to start out by saying I didn't play the verse to the song and I know the verse is very important but it's not something that is well known by most people. And so most people know the refrain, so I just wanted to keep it simple, stay with the refrain, but I, I do not want to shortchange people out there that may, you're, you know, the purists who want to hear the verse. And so um, maybe another occasion, write to me if you want to hear the verse, and I'll do that on another video. But I want to keep it short and just deal with the refrain. There's so much there in the refrain that that's a lot to deal with in one video. Okay, now explaining the piece that I played, If I Loved You, by Richard Rodgers and Oscar Hammerstein. And he also collaborated with Lorenz Hart on many of his great compositions. But he had mastered the you know, classic aspect of composing using inversions but also putting it into popular melodies, melodies that could be sung easily and that were very lyrical, you know. And pretty much this whole melody to uh, uh, If I Loved You is all in the key of C and it doesn't ever diverge. There's no, there's no uh, altered tones. Like, so now the interesting thing is, like imagine if I just played this and I played the wrong, wrong chord changes to that melody, what it, how it would destroy the melody like this. It's not the wrong chord, the chords are wrong, but they're not bad, I mean. They're just, they're just lame, you know. But these, you know, it just goes to show you how the chords make such a big difference. In other words, you have to have a marriage between the chords and the melody line and almost the chords are almost more important like you if you just create a good chord progression you could put it, thousands of melodies to it but to put the perfect melody to it would be this that diminished beautiful diminished chord there moving now to an inversion of the C chord there's your first inversion of the C chord now you know why because the melodies but it could he just kind of go back to the C again but why do that there's no journey there you know, there's no journey, but between the, you know, like uh, the C diminished or the E flat diminished, now we move up a half step to the E in the bass. And then the inversion of the, the augmented chord. That augmented chord is so important there. Especially just, you know, the, that augmented chord makes it want to move up to the F. But it's a, 
it's an inversion of a D minor. Why didn't you go to an F? Because he has a D there. You see, the D would, it would have to be an F6, which is the same as a D minor, so it really is a D minor with an F in the bass. Now this next one is a D sharp uh, uh, diminished again, which gives us a chromatic move to the inversion of the C with the E in the bass. You see, so these things are beautiful. If you take out those things, then you don't have the beauty. If you just played roots, it would sound like that. You see, there's no movement. Now with that, with the inversions, now you have harmonic movement in the bass. I will take it a step further and talk about the lyrics and the marriage of the lyrics because it's beautifully done and it's so clever what Richard Rogers does here. Now, it's very possible the lyrics were written first by Oscar Hammerstein and um, the opening line is, if I loved you. Well, there it is. Um, it's a question, right? If I loved, it, it's possible, but if I did, what would happen? You know, and you, you want an answer, so if I loved you. He, he puts in a, a chord that's a question mark. A, a diminished chord needs an answer. It has to go somewhere, right? Where does it go? It moves up to the, the C chord. And then time and time and again, I would try to say. Time and again, I would try to say. Still leaving you with a question. I'm trying to say what? So there's that augmented chord, which is reaching for something. And then all... I'd want you to know. See, this is a complete thought and musically expressed beautifully, musically and lyrically, lyric wise. So, now wrapping up, I wanted to show you how my book talks about chords and chord inversions and how to apply them to a melody. And I tried to show you that in a practical way, used in a beautiful song called If I Loved You by Richard Rogers and how he used these inversions to create a better bass line and also to put more beauty into the, me the melody. So I hope you enjoyed this and please write to me. We'll wrap up now. Wrapping up from the Jazz Ranch, thanks so much for joining me this evening. Please send me in your requests for Christmas songs. I'll be happy to address them. And I hope you enjoyed this. I hope it's helpful to you to learn about chord inversions. And until next time, I'll say in the words of my great friend, Hermie Dressel, he's still up there looking down on us, saying, Merry Christmas, but always swing loose, because you will be cool if you do. And until next time, I'll see you around the block. Bye-bye. <laughs>